Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato tonight. Electoral victories of governors of Oyo, Ogun, Kaduna, Katsina, Akwaibom, Nasarawa and Lagos states affirmed in a sweeping judgment by the Supreme Court. Federal High Court in Abuja grants request by EFCC to arrest the Briton Adam Quinn over his alleged involvement in the PID contract scandal. Nigeria Air Force continues bombardment of Boko Haram hideouts in Borno State as it destroys another camp used by the terrorists at Ngoske near Sambisa Forest. And US President Donald Trump set to be impeached in a vote in the House of Representatives over charges of obstruction and abuse of office. On business news tonight, Federation Account Allocation Committee shares over 630 billion naira to three tiers of government for November as revenue allocation falls by 66.23 billion naira against previous disbursement. On sports news tonight, FC Barcelona and Real Madrid FC fire blank in a security tight El Clasico clash at the Camp Nou. And from Abuja, Nigeria Medical Association demands increase in budgetary allocation to the health sector, calls for arrest and prosecution of persons behind attacks. The Supreme Court has affirmed the election of seven governors in a unanimous judgment of a seven-man panel led by Justice Mary Peter Odile. They are governors of Oyo, Ogun, Kaduna, Akwaibom, Nasarawa, Katsina and Lagos states. The court upheld the elections after listening to separate appeals regarding the outcome of the 2019 elections. Our correspondent Amaka Okafo reports. It was a winning streak for eight governors at the Supreme Court as the Apex Court upheld their elections, dismissing all the appeals challenging their elections. The Supreme Court affirmed the election victory of Mr. Shea Makinde of the People's Democratic Party as the Oyo State Governor. In a unanimous judgment, the Apex Court found merit in the appeal filed by Mr. Makinde that the majority judgment of the appeal court was a miscarriage of justice. The appeal court had earlier ruled against the Oyo Electoral Tribunal, which dismissed the petition by the All Progressive Congress and its candidate, Mr. Debayo Adelabu. In the case of Kaduna State Governorship election, Mr. Issa Ashiru, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, had approached the Supreme Court challenging the election victory of Mr. Nasir El Rufai. However, in a unanimous judgment delivered by Justice Santos Mweze, the appeal filed by Mr. Ashiru was dismissed for lacking in merit. It was also a victory for Mr. Abdullahi Saleh as the Supreme Court upheld his election as governor of Nasara State. A seven-man panel of the Apex Court, led by Justice Mary Peter Odili, dismissed the appeal filed by Mr. David Mbugadu and the PDP to challenge Mr. Saleh's victory at the March 9, 2019 governorship election. The court held that the appellant failed to prove allegations of substantial non-compliance in the election. In the case of Kassina State, Justice Ian Gokoro held that the appellant, Senta Garbalado of the PDP, did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Governor Bello Masari did not qualify to participate in the election. You heard the emphatic pronouncement of the Supreme Court to the effect that Governor Masari is Aminu Belo Masari is eminently educationally qualified to be governor of Katsina State. And all the hues and cries amount to a mere more here. My client is bound by it. Every one of us are bound by it. So that is the judgment. Similarly, the Supreme Court sealed the re-election of Mr. Udom Emmanuel of the PDP as a governor of Akwaibom State. In his ruling, Justice Datijo Muhammad held that the appeal by Mr. Nsime Ekere of the All Progressive Congress lacked merit and is dismissed. This was our contention, that uh, the appellants had uh, brought nothing to the Supreme Court, and uh, I am happy that uh, the Supreme Court held it. The Supreme Court also affirmed the election of Governor Dakwo Abiodun of Ogun State on the grounds that the appellant, Mr. Dekunle Akinlade of the Allied People's Movement, 
did not prove the allegation of substantial non-compliance and irregularities in the election. The Supreme Court concluded the day's proceedings by upholding the election of Governor Babajide Songwolu of Lagos State. The unanimous judgment was delivered by Justice Paul Galinje, who held that the relief sought by the appellant did not fall within the ambit of Section 138 of the Electoral Act. With these judgments, the Apex Court has brought to an end controversies surrounding any of these elections. Amaka. And from the Apex Court to the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja, which has granted a request by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to arrest the Briton, Mr. Adam Quinn, over his alleged involvement in the P&ID scandal. The order arose from a suit between the federal government and two firms, Gordo Resources Limited and ISIL, as well as Mr. James Nolan. The EFCC had sued Mr. Quinn and Mr. Noland, also said to be a signatory to the PNID accounts, alleging that both men used the two firms for money laundering. When the matter came up for hearing, the EFCC lawyer, Mr. Ekele Henacho, informed the court that he has a motion to arrest one of the persons named in the charges. He explained that though Mr. Quinn is currently not within the court's jurisdiction, the EFCC will proceed with an extradition process if the request is granted. Justice Okun Abang, in a short ruling, issued the warrant for arrest of Mr. Quinn and adjourned to January the 20th and 21st, 2020, for continuation of trial. From the judiciary to security, sustained airstrikes being conducted by the Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Dole under the auspices of Operation Rattlesnake destroyed another Boko Haram terrorist camp at Ngoske in the Sambisa Forest area of Borno State. The spokesperson for the Air Force, Air Commodore Ibikunle Daramola, who confirmed this statement, says the operation was executed on December the 16th after reconnaissance aircraft had observed the scaling up of terrorist activities in some compounds within the settlement. Accordingly, the ATF dispatched attack aircraft to engage the location where a significant number of terrorists had also been sighted. The planes hit the designated location, wiping out a part of the cluster of buildings in the area and neutralizing several of the fighters. Meanwhile, there's a fresh challenge for the Nigerian military in the fight against insurgency, especially in Borno State, where three local government areas are under the control of the insurgents. The state governor, Baba Gana Zulum, is now asking the army to reclaim Marte, Kukawa and Abadam, the affected local government areas. The continuous bombings by the Nigerian Air Force of insurgent locations is an indication that there's still a lot of work to be done by the federal government in wiping out the Boko Haram sect. This is in contrast to claims of total annihilation of the sect by the nation's security forces, the resurgence of Boko Haram in the northeast region with particular focus on Borno State. The conflict and reports of control is a source of worry to the state governor, who is forced to resort to pleading with the security chiefs and the Minister of Defense to rescue three local governments from the clutches of the insurgents. One is Kukawa local government. Under Kukawa local government Baga, Cross, and then Kukawa headquarters need to be retaken. There has to be military presence and the resettlement of communities back to these three locations with immediate impact where possible. This will reach the economy in the region. Before this, there was talk of more local governments under the grip of Boko Haram, but this has been described as rumor by the military, who remain optimistic that the sect will be defeated. Our priority is to ensure that all areas that will improve the social and the economic activities of the state and the nation will be given a very serious attention. And we believe Baga and some other areas you mentioned under the Kuka local government. As the military chiefs put heads together to stop Boko Haram, it's important to emphasize the urgency in ending the insurgency 
and to bring succor to those who suffer most from every attack carried out by the sect, people who just want to live in peace and freedom. To discuss the fight against insurgency, especially in the Northeast, I'm being joined live from Abuja by a security analyst and retired military officer, Major General Cecil Esekaibe. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Now, what we can hear now you, appears to be... Thank you. It appears to be some form of confirmation, at least from the Borno State Governor, that three local government areas in his state are currently under the control of insurgents. Are you surprised by the, by the conflicting reports of control? Well, first of all, let me commend the Governor for not leaving his self-denial. You see, the truth is that uh, insurgency is, uh, and terrorism, they are protracted crises. I, you know, it's laughable when you hear people give a deadline and ultimatum for ending this uh, uh, phenomenon. Yes, I'm not really surprised, uh, but I think the security forces are doing their best, but they still need to do a lot. And uh, you see, we must have to key into, you know, what the Global Terrorism Index uh, talk about. And I'm happy that the new uh, security strategy that has just been relieved will give, you know, a template to how we can better coordinate, you know, these uh, counter-terrorism uh, uh, operations. Well, the, the rhetoric coming from the government, at least in the last six months or year or so, has been that the insurgents have been, you know, substantially degraded. And what we can see are pockets of isolated hits. They even talked about lone attackers. But with this kind of request coming from the, from the Borno state governor to the army, how do you read the progress in this counter-insurgency effort? There's appreciable progress. That is what I said. You know, uh, you see, in counter-insurgency, the counter-insurgency is more costly than the, uh, the insurgency or the terrorism itself. So we need to put our ass together. And there is not, no other time than now when there is need for interagency cooperation. Because there seems to be a disconnect. Because when you hear the lot of bombings in Sabisa and all that, and you see here a governor crying foul that there is insecurity in this place, it calls for, you know, interagency cooperation to tackle this. Not that they are not doing their best. It's a protracted crisis. There is fluidity in their operation. And the counter effect is more costly and not as fluid as the act itself. So we need to put our ass together to see how we can end this menace and once and for all. But it's not, you know, an operation that you say tomorrow we'll finish it or you give a deadline for it. It's a protracted crisis. And this is the time to look at a counter-terrorist counter strategy that takes into effect what they call preventing, you know, those conditions that are conducive to the terrorist himself. And that is why you hear in the United States and some other countries, they call it the concept of soft power. You see, we don't rely on the military approach alone. And that is what the national security strategy has come to enunciate that, yes, you must have to look at the total of the human security and has been attenuated by, you know, technological development. So there must be a combination of the soft and the, uh, the hard power, which is the military target, to be able to tackle this urgency. It is not a military operation alone. At the strategic level, soft power, the battle of heart and mind, becomes very, very you know, important. Well, do you know the bombardment of the Boko Haram hideouts by the Air Force continues from what we understand. Are you impressed with the funding? Some people say perhaps it's a funding challenge and, um, you know, the military is quite stretched. Are you, are you impressed with the amount of funding that you think is going into, in, into prosecuting this fight? Yes, the government is doing its best in the face of competing needs of other sectors. But like I've always said in this program, the funding is not adequate. For instance, you know, budgetary provision for defense calculations is not enough. And that is why you see some countries. Let me give you an instance in the Lake Chad region. Niger has about 4% of their GDP dedicated to military funding. You know, uh, Chad has about 3.6% of their GDP for funding. Nigeria is a patry 1.8. So we must not rely on budgetary you know, allocations to tackle different calculations. So we must have to think outside the box, looking for special provisions 
for the military to be able to tackle this menace. All right, security analyst and retired military officer, Major General Sisi Lesekaigbe, thanks for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. And in part two of the break, two persons, one of them a policeman, killed following violent protests by youths in Akure over rumor of a child's body exhumed in a church. That's in a moment. Do join us again. <laughs>